<laughs> Why is that a sad sight? I'm out here looking for doors. Whatever other parts I can get. Oh man. Woo! Door skin. I got the handle. I got that. Don't have that, okay. Boy, is this thing gutted. Oh, there's a rear axle. So I can open this thing. Okay. 250 per door. All right. Some rust. The latch is broken. Hello and welcome to the first day of actually doing stuff on the Jeep. This is going to be wicked. I've got a whole bunch of stuff planned for the rest of today. I've got about five hours left of daylight. What we're going to do is replace that distributor cap down there, the rotor, these wires, and the spark plugs. That should give it a nice tune. Then we're going to go ahead and clean the idle air control sensor, throttle body, a few other things, take a look at the fuel rail because I've no idea if it's if it's good or not so I'm hopefully going to address that stuttering problem uh, the fuel filter I had a look underneath it's been relocated and it looks brand new so I don't think I need to replace that if I go to an auto parts store and you leave with a hundred bucks worth of stuff and it fits in a bag like that <laughs> I'm also gonna clean this thing out uh, there's a whole bunch of garbage in the back a whole bunch of stuff I just want to kind of clean out of this thing take that seat out. I don't need the seat, so I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell those door skins, and I'm going to sell these old doors. Without any further ado, uh, let's get started and see what we can do today. All right, so we're in fourth gear. Now we're going 70 kilometers an hour. There we go. Hear that? Stuttering is what I'm hoping to fix. So let's get back to the video. Alright, let's tackle this uh, idle air control now. And I did this on my Jeep ZJ. Okay, and it made actually a big difference. I got videos on that. And this thing here gets pretty damn dirty. Uh, and if this has been sitting since 2004 and it's 1988 and the engine's 1994 or whatever, then it's probably dirty. How you take that off is you, you spread it apart and pull back at the same time. And that comes out. Looks like it's in okay shape. And we're just going to go in here with a, a Torx 20. Pardon me. And then we'll go under all this gobbledygook. Use our finger to help guide the screw. Got it. Okay. Give it a twist. Twist and a turn. Careful not to drop it. Pull and hold that bolt as it comes out. And there we go. So this thing is in not terrible shape, but it could use a bit of a clean. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go clean this right now. Look how dirty that is in there. Get in there with Q-tips and spray. Scrape it all up. It's just carbon buildup over the years. So the way I'm going to clean this is with some sensor clean and uh, Q-tips basically. But I don't have any Q-tips because I'm poor. Uh, so instead we're just going to use some paper towels. You can see it's leaking. Oh, and by the way, do not lose this O-ring. Should make the idling a little smoother. I'm not an expert on the thing. I just know that it helped my Jeep, and if you have idling running problems, you can do this to your Jeep as well. 
Now you could unscrew this thing, right? You could unbolt that, but there's a gasket in here that good chances are you're gonna rip it up. So unless you have gasket material or you're willing to make another gasket uh, to seal this, then just leave this on. And stick your finger in there and clean it out. Just takes a little patience. Yeah, it's dirty. These fuckers, fuckers are gonna roll me. With your car? Yeah. So I chatted with the guy for a while. Yeah. And uh, hit it off. And I'm like, you know what? Just do me a solid. You, you hit it off with the guy? I just said, do me a solid, man. You know, I'm in a bad. I'm not, I'm not in a bad place, but I was. I'm showing like, I was like just, just fight for a good deal. If you, if you're gonna write it off, fight for a good deal for me. He, he, he hates Trudeau. Yeah. I'm gonna put it back. And the way that you do this, okay, because the bottom Torx is a bit harder to get to than the top one. So we're gonna put it on. Make sure the plug is facing the driver's side so that we can plug it back in. Stick my finger around, put this in the hole, and put my finger on that Torx. And that way it's not a hassle getting it in there. Okay, so now it's in. I'll grab the screwdriver. Get it all down here, feel for that Torx. Just get the thread started. Okay, now I can screw away. Tighten that up, but don't go too tight. When you go too tight, you'll strip it out. And then you'll be in a spot. So now that's all nice and clean. Start it up, make sure it works. Well, that's good news. Now, what should we do next? Let's see here. Let's replace the distributor, wires, the rotor, and the spark plugs. Oh, Jesus, look at this. <laughs> this is in rough shape. Let's compare the two. I have no idea what this is. I mean, I'm stupid when it comes to cars. We're crunching atoms in CERN. <laughs> flirting with like a fourth dimension and we have combustible engines like what the fuck's going on isn't that crazy something's wrong we're doing crazy things flying in a spaceship going around earth and here i am working with manual tools to resurrect a 1988 jeep that no one cares about <laughs> we're... there we go yeah pop that on Pop on the new distributor cap. Like this. You filming, dog? Dog? We're, we're dogs now? Yeah, what's up, dog? White trash. I numbered all these wires that, that are roughly the same length, so they should work out nicely. The long end goes on the spark plug. That's on there. And then this is number one. Number one, okay. It's on there, number two. So you'll notice on these wires, usually the long end, okay, goes where the spark plug is, but on this wire particularly, both ends are short. So this is the one that's gonna be in the center. Like that? Yeah, it's good to me. Okay, now we'll fire this up, see if it works. Okay, now I gotta put this all away and take it for a spin. See if it corrected the problem I was having. So we're in fifth gear now, going 100k. And I think it fixed the problem. It's hard to tell because it's so loud in here. Um, it's hard to hear if the engine's stuttering or not. Yeah, I think we fixed it. All right, now we're just gonna clean up the back of this thing put everything in this wheelbarrow and go find some space for it. Uh, and I'm gonna sell that seat and those doors because I don't need them. If anyone knows what this is, let me know.
Ooh, a seat belt. Uh, I need a fan that bolts on to the uh, water pump. Otherwise, if I get a fan that bolts onto this other pulley, which is off to the passenger side, then this shroud won't work for me. So. so it looks like I was wrong. These mirrors do fit here. And I think on the stock YJ, they, they kind of go in this position. I'm going to screw these on for the time being, and now I'll have side mirrors. So what, so what we have to do is make new holes and then just get a screw. Self tapper is easier, but you can just get any screw and screw it right through the metal. Oh, this one didn't come with screws. Such a beautiful sight on this beautiful evening day. Now that I've got this mostly cleaned out, I'm gonna sweep up the floor with this wire, with this wheel brush. Uh, cut that seat belt piece off, take out the seat, and we've got a clean back, boys and gentlemen, or ladies and gentlemen. So I got this all cleaned out. Turns out I don't have the right Torx bit to remove these Torx screws. I ended up stripping that one a little bit. Hopefully I can still get it out. That way I don't have to cut the seat belts. I can retain them and probably sell them or keep them. I'm not sure yet. To make this thing road safe, it does have to have seat belts. Now let me explain how the Rover 1 works. Okay, so how the Rover 1 works is you take this Jeep and you extend it by several inches. Now, I don't know what it is, 16 or 18 inches or whatever. Add it onto the back so effectively you have more floor space. And as you see, I'm sitting on this bench, on this wheel well. Effectively, the Rover 1 is going to have bench seating along this wall and that. And so you'll be able to sit on here like this. Uh, comfortably, I'll extend it out another few inches so you actually have something to sit on. Because I'm probably going to retain these um, these roll bars, right, for safety. So you'll be riding along, and this is where you'll sit. Now you'll notice my head's hitting this roof, and I'm 5'5", five five, so anyone who's taller, 6 foot, 5'10", they're going to be sitting like this in this car, right? But the Rover 1 gets an extended roof by like, uh, I don't know what it is, like six, or it's probably like eight to 10 inches of added roof. So someone who's 5'10", six foot, uh, can sit in here comfortably and not bash their head up on the roof, which is awesome. So the extended floor, so you can have one person sitting here and one person effectively would be sitting right here. I gotta say, this is gonna be the biggest, bestest project I've ever had the pleasure to do. And drag you guys along with it now three four five whatever amount of years it takes that's fine stay loyal you get to see the whole thing so sam's sitting in the front seat and i want to get back there instead of going out the door there's a center console in the way but effectively i would just come here like that and i'm in the back seat and i don't gotta worry about tripping and stuff so let's go over what we did today we installed new distributor plugs and wires we cleaned the idle air control valve. We cleaned the whole entire back of the Jeep. I straightened the accelerator pedal so that if you're wearing big boots, like you probably will be in sort of an apocalyptic scenario, then that way it's, it's not a problem. Still don't know what that orange thing is. Got a nice tire wrench, got a seat for sale now. So if you want that seat, let me know, but I'll probably sell it locally. And uh, we had a beer. So I think I figured out how 
they physically extended the wheelbase and the entirety of the Jeep. Allow me to explain. This is a completely stock YJ, right? I'm not sure what the wheelbase is, but it's pretty damn short. Now, the frame goes up like this to accommodate the axle. And so if you look underneath, there's the leaf spring mount. If you literally move it as far back as possible before that frame starts going up, which is like to right about here, you're getting, I don't know, six inches of extended wheelbase. So you move that tire six inches back this way, which is like approximately here, and then you put a 35 inch tire on. Now you have an extended wheelbase plus added lift from the tire itself. And then what happens is because we don't have six inches of frame to move this leaf spring back. And by the way, I'm thinking of using longer leaf springs for a improved ride. Now, um, I have no idea what leaf springs to get, but I'm wondering, is it better to use longer ones or just get stock YJ length? Let me know in the comments. But anyway, we'll just get full channel or C channel uh, frame, extend this by however many inches it is, I still have to do the math, and then cut the body probably right there and take this chunk and move it over. Right, and then we'll have to fill in that space with some sheet metal and make it look like the body. And there you go, you have an extended Jeep. Now, we'll probably have to extend the fuel lines, brake lines, that kind of thing too. And on the inside here, since we'll have a big cut in the floor, we'll have to replace chunks of the floor, chunks of the bed, uh, the, the bench seating as well with just sheet metal. And the roll cage will probably stay the same Maybe I'll manufacture uh, or custom build more. I have no idea yet. And so you just replace that with sheet metal and you have an extended wheelbase long Jeep. And it'd be pretty wicked. So it'd be, it would come to like probably here. I don't know. I was thinking it's like 16 inches, but I don't remember. So that's my plan for extending the thing. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Got to do lots more measurements. Axle width, what axle's best. Dana 60 front or Dana 44? I don't know. 14 bolt rear or Dana 60 rear? I don't know. GM, Dodge? I don't know. Full floating, not full floating? I don't know. Leave your opinion in the comments and I will sift through it. And when the time comes to actually do all that stuff, we'll really hit it hard and figure it out together. But... It's dark out. I couldn't find a Torx bit at the local hardware store, so uh, I'm going to try and find one tomorrow and take care of that seat belt. But until then, until further news, I shall talk to you later. This has been a fantastic first day. Did a good amount of stuff. I'm happy with what we've done. I wish I had more money. But we work with what we have. So until further news, I shall talk to you later.